Solo Leveling by Chu Gong Chapter 21 Part 2 Rank Evaluation Oh my! To think you've come see me in person despite your busy schedule. Please, you're Director Park of the Association. A phone call just isn't good enough when talking to you. The warm smile that accompanied President Zhang In Choi's words had the older director chuckling. The man in front of Director Park was the one who led the hunters, Korea's top guild, the ultimate hunter, the individual who commanded the country's most powerful strike squad. How could Director Park not be delighted that such a person was humoring him? Zhang In held up a cigarette. May I? Oh, of course. Would you like one? No, thank you. Zhang In lit the cigarette and brought it to his mouth absolutely oozing with ease befitting someone who had achieved success at a very young age. Is this what you'd call charisma? As Director Park was gazing at Jongin as if entranced, the hunter suddenly said, Seems like there's a commotion over in Building B. Building B? The director looked in the direction of the evaluation room. The director couldn't actually hear anything, but Jongin was an S-rank hunter. His heightened senses couldn't be compared to the average person's, so if he could hear it, then it was most likely happening. How humiliating for this to be occurring in the presence of such a distinguished guest. Director Park frowned. I'll go and take a look. Wait. Zhang and dropped the cigarette on the ground and stomped it out. I'm intrigued as well. Zhang and raised his head. His eyes shone and he had an enigmatic smile. I'll go with you. The entirety of Building B went dead silent in an instant. He said it was immeasurable. Then does that mean he's an S rank? I've only ever heard of immeasurable levels, but to think I'd witness it with my own eyes. Gulp. The recruiters from various small guilds swallowed the lumps in their throats that formed as Jean Wu turned around. However, not a single one of them attempted to talk to him. Had he been AC rank, it would have triggered mind games among them, and they would have been lining up to at least introduce themselves. Had he been AB rank, they would have bombarded him with incredible proposals, guaranteeing things like managerial positions, shares of the guild, etc. It would have been a war zone. And no wonder, considering the value of having a B-rank hunter in one's guild, not to mention the incentives for anybody who could sign a B-rank. It wasn't unheard of for B-ranks to be sweet-talked into being a big fish in a little pond. It was a different story when it came to a ranks and higher. A ranks receives special treatment, whether they be from the smallest guild or the largest. Becoming a member of an elite strike squad was a given, and since their main source of income was from high-ranked dungeons, the rewards were incredible. That wasn't all. If an A rank wasn't satisfied with any of the existing guilds, they also had the option of becoming a guild master. Since they could form a small to medium-sized guild themselves, was there any point in joining another? An A rank hunter had that kind of power. However, the man who had just been evaluated was said to be an S rank. Not even an A rank, but an S rank, the highest level of awakened beings, of which there were only nine in all of South Korea. Does that mean there's now ten if you include him? The tenth S rank hunter. He was out of the recruiter's league. Gulp. The only thing they could do was stay quiet and let him pass by. He was just high in the sky or so they thought at first, but wait a minute. Isn't there an opportunity here? A few sly scouts were simultaneously struck with the same brilliant idea. What if they connected the S-rank awakened being with a large guild and received a commission? An S-rank signing bonus was tens of billions of one. At least, receiving even 1% of that amount would let them retire on the spot and if they were lucky enough to get in his good graces and be appointed as his personal assistant, they would be set for life. There was a rumor that one such PA had received a Porsche for their birthday. 
Maybe I'll give it a go? I'm no slouch when it comes to the art of persuasion. Should I take the plunge? Countless thoughts ran through the recruiter's minds in a short period of time. The mortification of defeat would be fleeting, but the sweet thrill of victory would last a lifetime. They began inching toward Jean Wu while stealing furtive glances at one another. Right then, someone pointed at the entrance of the building. Huh? That's... Perhaps it was because they were on edge, but the recruiters all turned simultaneously. Their eyes bulged at the sight. Whoa! The man entering Building B wore a fashionable suit. There wasn't a single person there who didn't know his name. John, John and Choi? What's the president of the Hunters Guild doing here? Who else would it be? As if he was aware of the eyes on him, Jong In straightened out his suit jacket before striding over to Jean Wu. How did President Choi manage to get here so quickly? Wait, is that guy already signed with the Hunters Guild? They had intel on him? A top tier guild really is built differently. They should have expected this. The recruiters readily accepted the inevitable. They were glad they hadn't spoken to Jean Wu. How pathetic would it have been if President Choi had walked in on them buttering Jean Wu up? It was clear to them where things were headed. President Choi completes the picture. He's so cool. The representative of the hunters himself. S ranks really do get the VIP treatment. Their slight disappointment aside, the recruiters watched the meeting of an awakened being of the highest rank and the president of Korea's best guild with warmth in their eyes. For his part, Jin Wu breathed a sigh at the sight of Jong In. That's a relief. He'd been in the middle of debating what to do about receiving so much attention, but President Choi had graciously diverted the spotlight, even if unknowingly. Jin Wu silently thanked him for the unexpected help as he walked straight past the guild president. Jong In was caught off guard. What? Wait. Jong In hurriedly called out to Jean Wu. Just a moment. Jean Wu stopped in his tracks and looked back. Jong In's eyes shone as he regarded Jin Wu's face. This man is number 10. Jong In had told Director Park some nonsense about finding out what was going on together, but to tell the truth, he was already completely filled in. It was impossible for me to miss all the chatter about immeasurable power and errors with the mana meter and whatnot. Thanks to that, he'd been presented with a huge opportunity and an S rank to boot. If he could secure this man, the Hunter's Guild would have three S rank hunters in its ranks. And not only would it be the strongest guild in South Korea, but it would be able to hold its own with the top guilds of the world. How could Jong In not jump at the prospect? No need to borrow a mana meter. He could feel how strong Jean Wu was simply by making eye contact with him. Jean Wu was a top-class hunter without a doubt. There was no reason to wait three days. Ahem. Zhang Ying cleared his throat and shot his signature winsome smile at Jean Wu. I'm the president of the Hunters Guild, Zhang Ying Choi. Jean Wu knew that much. Zhang Ying's face popped up on TV all the time. Although he was curious as to why this famous person had come all the way to the association to talk to him, he didn't have time for a leisurely chat. He glanced at the clock on the wall. It's already 5.50. If he factored in transit time, it'd be a close call. Upon seeing Jin Wu's impatience that clearly indicated he should get to the point, Zhang In was slightly taken aback as he continued. Oh, so... I hear you received your rank evaluation. Yes. Do you have a guild in mind? No, not yet. Jong In brightened upon hearing this. Nice, we're finished here. The Hunters was among the world's top three guilds. How sweet those words sounded. From this day on, it would no longer be a pipe dream. You're mine. Jong In clutched the welcome news close and spoke the words that might very well be recorded in history books. I'd like to discuss that matter. Do you have a minute? I don't. 
Sorry. Jean Wu cut him off and promptly exited the association building. It had happened so fast, the thought of catching up to him didn't even cross John In's mind. The association employee and recruiter onlookers were astonished as they belatedly realized what had happened. What the heck? Was President Choi actually rejected? It looked like he flat out ignored President Choi. Murmur, murmur. It quickly turned clamorous in the building. Jong In did his best to keep his cool and turned to the man standing next to him. Director Park. Yes, the director answered awkwardly. Did I forget to introduce myself just now? I, I'm not quite sure myself. Of course, the director had been right next to Jong In for the whole encounter and had seen and heard everything. However, this wasn't the time for honesty, was it? When the director clammed up, Jong In scratched his head in embarrassment. Did I come in too hot? But there was no need for disappointment. He was still a step ahead of the other guilds. I'm the only one who knows about the newest rank. The reevaluation would be in three days. There was time before the official announcement. I want to arrange a meeting with him at least one more time before then. What would be the best approach? While Jong In pondered this, he caught sight of someone bolting toward the association building. Is that? It was a face he knew well. As soon as the man pushed open the glass door, Jong In blurted out a question in surprise. President Beck, why are you? Beck's eyes widened when he recognized Jong In. President Choi? Jong In scanned Yunho's expression. He looks like he was caught doing something. Yunho wasn't here because he'd heard something from his informant. He'd gotten here way too quickly for that. Considering the distance between the White Tiger headquarters and the Hunters Association. So that was it. President Beck must have been in on it from the start. He'd already known what was going to happen here. He's aware of that man's existence? No, Yunho wouldn't have let him get evaluated if that were the case. If I were Yunho, I would have signed the guy first before allowing the reevaluation. At that moment, all the puzzle pieces scattered in his mind started to come together. Could it be? The White Tiger Guild, the training incident, the Red Gate, the nameless supporter, and the appearance of a new S rank awakened being. White Tiger got help from someone they don't want anyone else knowing about. Is it a new hunter who has yet to be diagnosed as an awakened being? Or a criminal whose identity needed to be concealed? Everything made sense now. Jong In had found him. So it was him. Seeing as how President Beck had sprinted so hard that he was now huffing and puffing, it wasn't that he just let Jin Wu do whatever he wanted. No, it was that President Beck couldn't stop him. President Choi smiled at President Beck. You let this slip through your fingers. But Jong In was different. I'll happily accept this golden opportunity. President Choi brushed past Yun Ho without another word. Yun Ho looked around, but Jin Wu was nowhere to be seen. Am I too late? Yun Ho let out a sigh, watching Jong In's back as he departed. Ha! Huh. To think the guild master of the Hunter's Guild would also be here. Yun Ho scratched the back of his head and mumbled. Things are getting complicated. Visiting hours at Seoul Ilshan Hospital were until 8 p.m. You're Kyung Hai Park's guardian, correct? Yes. You can go in. You're aware of when visiting hours end? I am, yes. Jin Wu headed toward his mother's hospital room. He'd been able to get to there in time by rushing. Click. Jin Wu opened the door, made his way over to the bedside, and quietly took a seat next to his mother, who remained motionless as if asleep. When I look at her, it's like she'll wake up as if nothing's wrong. But she was in a deep sleep from which she couldn't awaken. She was diagnosed with an illness that had first been discovered when Gates began appearing. I think they said there were around 10 or so patients with the same condition in this hospital alone. 
he gently took his mother's hand. Mom! Fortunately, a life support system that ran on essence stones kept his mother's hand from withering away, despite her having been in a coma for several years. Unfortunately, essence stones were expensive. It cost more than five million won to keep the machine constantly operating for a month. If the association didn't cover medical bills for their hunters, it wouldn't have been something he as a young man in his 20s could have afforded. He was able to hold his mother's hand thanks to all his efforts to this point. But things were different now. Instead of being satisfied with keeping her breathing, he had a chance to actually cure her. The elixir of life, the cure gifted to him by the system. Whether it would actually work or not was a matter for later. Getting it crafted was the current issue at hand. I'll save you. In the absence of their father, and despite her failing health, his mother had done her best to take care of her children. It wouldn't be long now before she was up and about again. Please hang on until then. How long had he been keeping watch over her? After a significant amount of time had passed, he stood. His visit having come to an end, Jean Wu soundlessly left the room and cautiously closed the door. When he turned around though, he was met with a familiar face. So you really were the one who took care of the magic beasts in the double dungeon, weren't you? That low, deep voice and those sharp eyes. It was Jinchul Wu, the manager of the Hunters Association surveillance team. Jean Wu didn't answer. He had no reason or desire to do so. Instead, he had a question of his own. How did you know I was here? I came up with a list of places I anticipated you'd be, and when I contacted the hospital, they told me you were here. The association had paid for his mother's hospital bill until recently, though not anymore. The hospital may very well have been the first place he checked. The surveillance team acted swiftly, as expected. Jean Wu couldn't help snorting his laughter as he asked, did you go out of your way to find me to ask about what happened that day? Jinchul shook his head. That's not it. Then what brings you here? There is someone who would like to meet you. Will you please come with me? The Hunters Association surveillance team. Their main purpose was to keep track of and monitor hunters and to penalize those who broke the law. They were the last people with whom hunters wanted to cross paths. Because of that, Jean Wu regarded Jinchul with distrust. Is that an order? No. Jinchul took off his sunglasses. He bowed at a near perfect 90 degree angle and asked courteously. I would like to humbly ask that you do. Jean Wu hadn't expected the intense man to go this far. And after deliberating for a bit, he made up his mind to at least find out who was behind all this. Who's asking for me? Jinchul finally straightened up. President Gun Higo of the Hunters Association. He held up his hand and gestured to around the corner behind him. The president is right this way. At the president's office at the Hunters Association, the doctor examining President Go looked grim. He lifted the stethoscope from President Go's chest. Mr. President, no, you don't need to say anything. I can tell from your expression. President Go chortled as he buttoned up his shirt. The doctor stayed quiet. That he's even up and about is nothing short of a miracle. Despite this, President Go was chugging along at full speed without slowing down. He even had his doctor examine him at his office because he didn't have time to go to the hospital. You know, President Go slipped an arm through his suit jacket. When healers and healing magic came into existence, I thought I could regain my youth, bid farewell to this old, haggard body. President Go chortled again. But that wasn't the case. Have there been no advancements? Apparently, there's nothing even a high rank healer can do about old age. Had healers been able to eliminate all diseases, Hospitals throughout the country would have had to shut down, and doctors would have been out of work. Fortunately, 
or unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Mana helped with regeneration. Healing magic was limited to mending physical wounds. It could miraculously regrow a severed arm, but it couldn't lower the fever of a child with a cold. Thanks to that, I'm still gainfully employed, but... The doctor watched over President Go, who was already prepping himself to head out for the next item on his agenda. I hope the president of all people can find a treatment, even if it's through magic. Currently, neither healing magic nor modern medicine was useful for President Go's condition. The only thing the doctor could offer was advice. You require bed rest. You must rest, even for a little bit. I would like that, too. But what would happen to the Hunters Association if he did? President Go's laugh implied a question. The association without me, gun he go. Even at this moment, large guilds with deep pockets were expanding their influence by the minute. Their power was already comparable to a country's military might. The only reason the association had any leverage among the guilds wasn't because of the government behind them, but because President Go led them. As soon as the association lost hold of the guild's reins, they'd be running free like wild horses. Not, not yet. It wasn't quite time for President Go to retire. The association was the only thing keeping the large guilds in check. He couldn't leave before he could set up a viable plan B. I need to be here to show that the association is still going strong. He was an S rank above all S ranks. He was a vital part of the association. So until then, no matter what it took. R. President Go cried out in pain. He grabbed his chest, wrinkling his immaculately pressed dress shirt. President Go here! The doctor held out a painkiller and a cup of water. Thank you! The medicine gave him some measure of relief. Right then. Hmm? His phone rang even though he'd ordered his secretary not to bother him while the doctor was here. Frowning, he answered the call. I'm in the middle of a physical. The urgent voice of his male secretary came over the receiver. I'm sorry, sir. Something pressing came up. Did Japan call again? They did, but that's not it. President Go's eyebrows raised. A bigger problem than those damn Jeju ants? What could it possibly be? What is it? The secretary squeaked out a response just before President Go ran out of patience. We've received word from the evaluation team. Evaluation team? The job of the evaluation team consisted of raiding gates and awakened beings. It wasn't a group that usually caused problems. Or maybe... Did they make another error measuring a gate? A scowl came over his face as he recalled the recent conflict with the White Tiger Guild. His displeasure didn't last long. What the secretary told President Go was beyond anything he could have expected. The evaluation team. They said there was an awakened being within a measurable rank. President Go of the Hunters Association? Had he heard that right? Jean Wu wasn't sure. The person referred to as the most powerful hunter in South Korea had come to the hospital at this time of night to meet him? That can't be. Although Jean Wu was half in disbelief, Jinchil gestured again and confirmed what Jean Wu thought he'd heard. The president of the association is here. Jinchil's eyes radiated anxiety as he awaited Jin Wu's response. It was clear he wasn't joking around. This is seriously happening. Why was Gun Higo looking for him? Jin Wu couldn't rein in his racing thoughts. It had to be because of the results of his reevaluation, right? Is he trying to recruit me for the association? However, the association was a non profit organization. It wasn't necessary for the president to bring along a surveillance team member in order to scout a single hunter. Besides, he hadn't had his full evaluation yet. The more he thought about it, the curiouser it all was. Fine, Jean Wu agreed. 
Jinchil's expression lit up so quickly that one could barely tell he'd ever been nervous. Thank you very much. Sincerity rang in his voice. To think such an intimidating man could make those expressions. Jean Wu was fascinated as he followed Jinchil. When they turned the corner, Jean Wu caught sight of an old man seated on one of the hard chairs in the hospital waiting room. That's Jean Wu gulped. A god among gods. That's what S rank Hunter Gun he go was known as. Shop. President Go spotted him and rose from his seat. Hunter Jean Wu saw? Even though he was over 80, Gun He Go was an old man with a commanding presence. His physique reminded Jean Wu of a retired pro wrestler or a traditional Sirem wrestler, but without the cocky attitude. He's different from what I expected. Jean Wu figured the man would come across as a formidable, but the secretary next to him wore a more menacing expression. Yes, I'm Jean Wu Sung, he answered. President Go extended a hand with a pleased smile. Nice to meet you. I'm Gun He Go. They shook hands, and President Go waved at a couple of chairs that had been arranged facing each other. Have a seat. Thank you. The president waited for Jean Wu to sit before doing the same. A gold badge on President Go's jacket collar caught Jin Wu's eye. The man was both a congressman as well as the president of the Hunters Association, and an S rank awakened being to boot. President Go wasn't someone with whom people could easily get in. Audience. Countless individuals, from politicians to business tycoons from abroad, wanted to meet with him, which made this whole thing even stranger. Why was someone like Gun He Go in a rush to meet little old Jean Wu? First Jong and Choi, now Gun He Go? Jin would have the honor of meeting not one, but two people regarded to be at the top. He hadn't even been officially confirmed to be an S rank yet. President Go interrupted his musings. Congratulations on becoming an S rank hunter. Jean Wu cocked his head. My results haven't been confirmed yet. The president shook his head. To be honest, the reevaluation doesn't mean much. Pardon? He gently smiled at Jin Wu's confounded expression. A sophisticated manometer does give more precise measurements, but it's not designed to measure immeasurable quantities. Then why? You're asking why there is a reevaluation procedure at all? He was spot on. If the results were the same, why drag out the process? President Goh's answer was simple. It's a grace period. Grace period. Before Jean Wu could ask, President Go continued sheepishly. That's how long we can get away with to reach out to hunters like you first. Oh, Jean Wu perfectly understood what he was implying. As you know, despite the size of the association, there aren't many excellent hunters like Manager Wu in our employ. Because of the large guilds, right? Because of the large guilds. Jean Wu had hit the nail on the head. Who would come to the association when fame and money are guaranteed by large guilds? The income for hunters in the association wasn't meager, but it was petty cash compared to how much they could make in a large guild. Fame was the same. There are many who can list off the names of elite strike squad members, but very few know about Manager Wu. At the mention of elite strike squads, Jean Wu recalled A-rank Hunter Chul, Kim. The perception stat allowed Jean Wu to appraise another person's ability. By his assessment, Jin Chul was definitely in a class above Chul. Even though they're the same rank, their skills are on different levels. Jean Wu turned to look at Jin Chul, who blushed and bowed his head at the president's compliments and Jin Wu's gaze. However, if Chul had managed to start working as a hunter, he would have had heaps more money and fame than Jin Chul. That was the difference between a hunter from the association and a hunter from a guild. That's why we set up this little trick in case an extremely talented awakened being showed up at the association. And that trick was the reevaluation. I mean, 
if you think about it. Once the results became public and word spread, it would be much harder for the association to approach such a person. It made sense for them to go about things this way. Let me get to the point. President Go's smile had vanished. We're not a company, so we cannot promise to make you rich. However, President Go had been fiddling with something on his chest, and he now thrust out his fist, which was clenched tightly around something. We can help you down a different path. What do you mean? I mean we can nurture you to have a different kind of power. He revealed the item in his hand. There, on his palm, lay his glittering gold badge. Does he mean political power? Jean Wu just looked confused. I don't understand. Pardon? Why are you going so far for me? That was a valid question. President Go's eyes shone as he examined Jean Wu. Instead of being intimidated by me or tempted by the incredible opportunity right before his eyes, he's calmly voicing his doubts. Had he been too hasty? He'd heard that patience decreases with age, and that clearly wasn't wrong. President Go swallowed his laugh and continued. You know the top five guilds, don't you? How could Jean Wu not? He silently nodded. Currently, there is a delicate balance among the five monsters of Korea. There were the Hunters, White Tiger, and the Reapers in Seoul, plus Fame and the Knights outside of Seoul. If you join one of the five guilds, no matter which, the balance will tip and huge change will come. The large guilds were already powerful enough to pierce the sky. But if one of them welcomed another S-rank hunter and claimed a spot above the rest, would they deign to listen to the association then? The association's role was to maintain balance. You cannot control hunters with laws, regulations, or governmental authority. Jin would have the same thought not too long ago. Magic beasts weren't the only monsters. Hunters could be just as monstrous. Heck, based on power alone, hunters were arguably more dangerous. That is why we need the association. President Go's expression revealed the gravity of the situation. And the association needs hunter Jin Wu Sung. They needed someone as powerful as Jin Wu. Gunny's gaze was shrewd. I'd have to have him close by and keep an eye on him for a time, but if Jin Wu accepted, Gun he intended to give him all the support he needed. S ranks were worth that kind of treatment. That should be enough for him to understand. All that was left was. For the first time in quite a while, President Go felt a mix of apprehension and excitement. He asked in a low voice, What will you do, Hunter-san?